Hi folks, Ron from RJM Music here, and for our third video about the Mastermind GT, I'm going to start showing you a little bit about how this is configured. And so what we have here, you may not be able to see it in the video, but there are two little buttons here underneath the screen, and um, those are used only for the setup mode, and uh, to enter the setup mode, you hold both of them for a couple seconds, and now you have a uh, setup menu. And the idea here is to use the entire surface of the GT as a menuing system and uh, what we'll do is um, go over just the real basics. There are a lot of options here um, but one thing we try to set up for you is that um, the more frequently used functions are towards the top and it gets a little more uh, specific down towards the bottom. And so what we're going to do is set this up for a new device and the one we're working with today is the uh, exceedingly popular AxeFX 2 and uh, so what we'll do is we'll hit this button here, the Setup Devices, and we'll see that we've got uh, one device already uh, set up for us, and that's out of the box. We have it set up for uh, one of our rack gizmos, and uh, we have 15 other empty slots. And so we'll hit this empty slot here, and it's asking us what, uh, what type of device do we have. So we hit that button, and now we have a short list of some manufacturers here. And uh, this is a short list now, but at the time that the GT is actually released, it's going to be longer, and we're going to keep adding support for more devices and manufacturers over time. Uh, so what we want here is Fractal Audio, and then we've got uh, the three AxeFX models, and we're going to say AxeFX 2. Okay, so now it's going to show us a bunch of things about that particular device. Uh, there's a, a whole bunch of parameters. Most of them have been set for us already. Um, the, the Mastermind GT is smart enough to know a lot of parameters about a lot of devices. And so some of these things like preset offset and bank type and that sort of thing, you don't have to deal with it. It does it for you. Um, the only thing we do have to do is set the MIDI channel um, because it can't figure that one out for you. And so um, on, on our system here, we've set it up for MIDI channel 2. So I hit MIDI channel and now it asks me which MIDI channel would you like? Selecting 1 through 16, and we're on MIDI channel 2. Okay, done. Next, um, we're going to use some of the uh, other built-in features here, and we have this one that says Set Default Buttons. And what that does is it copies a, uh, a default page of buttons uh, specific to the axe effects, and so that way you can get started quickly uh, without having to type in a bunch of parameter names and, and that, anything. It, it gives you a good starting point. So we're going to say set default buttons, and now it's asking you which button page would you like to copy those buttons to. If you recall from the previous video, um, we can have uh, up to 16 button pages. And so we're going to copy the AxeFX buttons to uh, page 1. So the next thing we're going to do is this get preset names feature. And this is something that uh, the AxeFX series supports, and that allows the controller to download preset names from the device. Uh, not a lot of effects processors do this. Hopefully in the future more will. But uh, we'll certainly take advantage of it with the AxeFX. And we're going to hit this button, and what it does is it's going to go through all 384 presets and uh, bring them down to the, uh, to the Mastermind GT. This, is, this takes a, a good while. It, it'll take a couple minutes, and so... Uh, through the magic of TV, we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, we're done. And so now, um, all we have to do is uh, hit done here with the little button. And uh, there's one other step it has to do, and that just quickly um, sets all the preset numbers correctly for the device. This one only takes a couple seconds. And this only has to be done once. There we go. So now we have the Rack Gizmo and the Axe FX2 set. We're going to hit Done, and we'll hit Done again to get out of the Setup menu. And so now things are a bit different. Um, our our uh, buttons are now set up for Axe FX specific features. You'll see we have a tap tempo button blinking. Um, we have uh, a bunch of effects blocks, the uh, drive blocks, flanger phaser rotary, even the, uh, the amp uh, XY blocks all that there. Um, the preset names have been set now um, to match what's in the Axe FX. Um, and actually if we hit the IA mode button you'll see that there's even more things. All these buttons change. So now we've got uh, the XY settings for the drive blocks, um, pitch, filter, and all that. And so 
all of this is now set up to control the axe effects. And so now, as we switch presets, you can see which ones um, have which effects blocks. The, uh, the axe effects will report back for each preset and say, well, you know, the tremolo button is no longer on because there's no tremolo defined in this preset. And same with drive two. Um, these other ones are available, but they're not on right now. And then over here, delay one is available and it's on by default in this preset. And so, for example, if we go up here to a uh, higher bank where they start getting pretty uh, varied in their effects, I pick the uh, Cliffs of Dover patch, and you can see this one only has the um, Drive 1, Delay 1, and the Amp Block set of the options that are shown, and uh, all the other ones are not even in the preset. If we go to here to People Get Ready, you see that the chorus comes on and the compressor is available, but not on. And that is full support for the Axe Effects. It uh, should make a really excellent controller um, used along with those, with those devices. Um, so let's show you a little bit also um, some of the other um, simpler editing features. Um, we'll go back to um, the first preset. Is 59 base guy, and so now we see our uh, default settings here for that. And um, let's say, okay, well, you know, I'd really rather have the uh, the tempo button up here, and let's say we're going to put the um, and then we'll put the uh, the tremolo over here and the drive over here. And so um, we'll go back into setup and we'll use the swap buttons feature and now it's flashing to say it wants you to select a button and we're going to take the tremolo and the tempo and swap their positions and then we're going to swap buttons again and we're going to take the tremolo and the drive and swap positions so now tempo finds itself up here drive is over here and tremolo is over here so that's how easy it is no names to uh, to assign, no, uh, no, but no numbers to edit, you just uh, tell it where you want it to go and you're good. Okay, and let's now let's do something else. Let's say that there's a function on the axe effects that isn't visible on the default page that we created and uh, we want to get at that particular function. So let's go over here and hold the buttons to get into setup mode again. We're going to press setup buttons and let's take the drive to button and change that one. Okay, in a later video we're going to get into the whole button edit functionality in detail, but for now what we're really concerned with is this button action section. And if you can see this on the camera, not sure, basically it says Axe Effects 2, CC Toggle, Drive 2. So it's saying it's toggling the Drive 2 parameter on the Axe Effects 2. And so this is what we want to change. And so we're going to press the button and you'll see all of the, uh, the details for that particular message. And uh, the nice thing is you don't need to know about them, um, but the CC number, the off value, and the on value are all displayed here. And so what we want to do is press the select CC button. And what you're presented with here is a list of all the functions that are controllable on the Axe Effects, and there's quite a few, and so there's multiple pages, but we can page over here, go through all these parameters, you've got drives and phasers and flangers and filters and, and everything. Let's take this ring modulator here, and it says assign a CC to button drive 2, and so we're going to press ring mod, and then we're going to save it. And so now you can see the button's name has changed to ring mod, uh, which is something that you can uh, change yourself as well. And um, all we have to do is press the left button, hold the left button, and uh, press right, and that'll jump us out of the setup mode. And so now, um, this Drive 2 button that was here now says Ring Mod. Um, it's probably hard to see on the camera because it's not lit up because this preset doesn't have a ring modulator in it. But that's as, as quickly as you can uh, swap a function out on one of these buttons. And so no need to look up controller numbers, no need to type in names, it's all done for you. Okay, and now let's talk a little bit more about the uh, 
the uh, connectivity between the two. You see we do have our uh, AxeFX sitting here and we're connected with a single MIDI cable. Um, this is a five pin cable um, and we're getting bi-directional MIDI communication which is, which is great. Um, you just have to make sure that your five pin MIDI cable actually has all five wires um, connected all the way through. Um, some of the cheaper MIDI cables only have three wires connected and uh, that's all you normally need for MIDI but when you're doing bi-directional communication you need uh, five wires. Um, you can also use a seven pin cable um, but it's important not to uh, phantom power the Mastermind GT from the Axe effects. Uh, the, the Mastermind GT draws a fair amount of current and it will burn out uh, some components in the Axe effects so definitely don't do that. We will be uh, selling phantom power adapters that you can use to uh, send the phantom power down a 7 pin MIDI cable without passing it through the AxeFX box or, or any other um, processor box and uh, that way you can get the, the power safely down to the, to the GT without, uh, without harming anything. And uh, we can show you here that the cool thing is that uh, because it is bi-directional we can, we can change presets here and of course they'll change on the AxeFX but also if you change presets on the axe effects, um, things will change on the GT as well. And so definitely we have uh, MIDI communication going both ways, which is a pretty useful feature. And so that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, as always, go to our forum um, at uh, www.rjmmusic.com or email us at support at rjmmusic.com. Thanks, and we'll have another video for you soon.